Hey guys, it's Leo from G Margin. I'm sitting here right now in the car outside of a Salvation Army in Middletown, New York. Um, this month's stack challenge is going to be a budget of $100. And basically what I'm going to be doing is, is taking $100 and hopefully turning it into $1,000 by the end of the month by going exclusively to Goodwill, Salvation Armies, and other thrift stores. Hopefully buying items and then multiplying that initial cost by about 10, 10 times so that we can get to 1000 bucks. There's a couple things I just want to keep in mind before we go into the store. Um, first of all, location of the store. So is this a college town? Is it a depressed area? Is it an affluent area? Is it a place where there's going to be a lot of elderly folks? Um, each of those distinctions is going to determine what I'm looking for when I walk into this Salvation Army. Now this happens to be a town that's pretty, um, pretty depressed at the moment. It used to be affluent. It used to have a lot of industry. And now it doesn't. So what I'm going to be really banking on is the fact that I'm going to be able to walk into the store and just know more about the antiquities that might potentially be here. In addition to that, though, there's a few things I always like to look for when I go into a store like this. Um, number one is housewares. So with housewares, you can have um, old art glass, hull pottery, Fenton glass, as well as other types of art pottery. And most importantly, utensils. I always check the utensils. Really because there's two things you want to look for. Number one is sterling silver stuff. So you can tell the difference between it and hopefully we'll find some in here. And secondly, Bakelite handled utensils. This is a 1920s and 30s resin plastic that used to be used on the handles of a lot of different silverware. Both of these types are actually highly collectible. Sterling silver obviously more than Bakelite, but that's one thing I want to look at. Number two, I always go to clothing. Now, if I'm in a college town, I'm going to look for old vintage t-shirts, concert t-shirts, rock t-shirts, stuff like that. Um, in this case, though, I'm going to be going in there and checking for cashmere sweaters and cashmere shirts, as well as potentially some high-end blazers. There's a lot of old Oscar de la Renta dresses sometimes you'll find as well. But cashmere blazers, cashmere sweaters, nice blazers. So we're talking Brooks Brothers. Uh, Valentino, stuff like that, as well as high-end evening gowns. Um, next is artwork. Now, this is always tough because the second a Goodwill or Salvation Army employee sees an oil painting, they always make it 30 bucks. It's not always worth 30 bucks. In fact, a basic piece of art by an unlisted artist is only going to go for 20 or $30. But if I can walk in there and somebody has mistakenly labeled something a print when in fact it's a real piece of original art that's been signed, I can make a pretty nice profit off of that. Now the thing I want to keep in mind when walking in here is I'm not looking for collectible items. I'm looking for items that I can multiply the initial cost of that item by 10. So if I walk in, I want to get a utensil for 25 cents if I can sell it for $2.50. Basically the idea is that by the end of the month, if I've spent my $100, I want to have $1,000 in profit to show for it. A Couple more things. Walking in, you want to look at stuffed animals exclusively stife bears and stife animals. Sometimes you'll find them in Salvation Army and Goodwill. And additionally, if I was in a college town right now, I'd definitely check the book section. Number one, for audiobooks, but also secondly, for newer edition college textbooks. A lot of times, kids will just give their give their books or their college books away to the Salvation Army after their semester. And I've had a couple of instances where I found some really great college textbooks that are used, but I can sell at a really great profit. The last thing to remember, I'd say, is always check the condition of the item. If you're going in and buying glass or pottery or anything like that, you really want to make sure that it's in good condition. And if you have a smartphone, just check the price while you're in there. There's no reason to buy it and then figure out that you got screwed in the end. So go in, check the price while you're in there, and try to get a reasonable estimate of how much something could sell for. All right, so let's go on in, and hopefully we can find some really great stuff. See you. Now one really great way to see if a sweater is cashmere is just to feel it. And if you walk around and just touch on the sweater, you can actually feel cashmere. It's a lot softer. Sometimes they'll be really good acrylics that'll feel like cashmere, but if you check the tag, you can see in fact it is. So I'm going to do that. Here's an awesome example. Uh, 
100% cashmere coming from the sweater. Um, this sweater, although it's a pretty shoddy shape, um, new with this sweater would go for 150 bucks. Online, you get about 30 for it. So here's two awesome items that I just found. Um, they were just sitting in the forks and spoons box. Um, they're 10 cents each. But if you see here on the back, it reads sterling. So these are two sterling silver, really nice forks. They're going to cost you 20 cents. Um, they have some weight to them. So it's sterling's price is about 20 bucks an ounce right now. Um, we're looking at $40 per kid. All right, so we're back from my Salvation Army adventure. Um, I ended the day with four cashmere sweaters, two cashmere suit blazers, uh, five sterling silver utensils. I got two forks and three spoons, which is the most I've ever actually gotten out of a Salvation Army haul. In addition, at the very end, I checked out the jewelry case. You'll almost always find a jewelry cabinet next to the cashiers. Um, I don't look for gold, really. I think that's kind of a, a, a lost cause. But what I always do look for is the plastic Bakelite jewelry. Um, sometimes you'll find really nice carved Bakelite bracelets and jewelry counter for like a dollar or two. Um, and what you actually can do is sell those on eBay after a little bit of cleanup as long as you check to make sure they're in fact Bakelite. Sometimes those can go for like 80 bucks, 100 bucks. Um, normally 20, 10, around there. But either way, you're making money. So I finished out spending about $35. I'm hoping that when I get it home, check everything, I can sell it for around $350. So thanks so much for coming along, and um, hopefully I'll do this again soon. All right, bye.